Hi, I'm Philip Hundle. I'm an attorney here with Wadler Purchase Hundle & Curlick in Wharton, Texas. I'd like to talk to you briefly about uh, general estate planning. Uh, I oftentimes uh, have friends and family come up to me and, and ask me, Philip, what's the most imp important estate planning document? Uh, that's the document I want. And unfortunately, uh, it's hard to give them one particular answer because there's important estate planning documents for different situations and circumstances. So I normally uh, will uh, advise the client that there's uh, typically four general estate planning documents that um, are most relevant here in Texas, and those would be principally the will. Everyone has heard, uh, know, has talked about a will, but uh, everyone should uh, have a will. Uh, and then a medical power of attorney, and then a financial power of attorney, a uh, HIPAA release form, which is a release form for your medical records, and then also on occasion, uh, clients, I recommend and clients uh, wish to have a directive to physicians and family. And I'll go over what each one of those documents does. But uh, the will, I believe everyone's heard about the term, or heard of the term will. Uh, your will uh, identifies uh, your beneficiaries of your estate, your children, your family, your surviving spouse, and then deter and, and determines or decides uh, who will receive uh, and what sh what portion or share of your estate. So it, it, you decide in your will who will be your beneficiaries of your estate. Also, uh, in your will, you decide who will be the uh, manager of your estate. In other words, uh, also known in, in the will as the executor. So you get to appoint your executor and successor executors. Uh, also, uh, a person in their will has the ability to determine or decide who they would like to uh, be the guardians of their children if they have minor children at the time of their death. Uh, also, uh, uh, an individual can decide who they would uh, not like to be the guardian of their children. So there's lots of different choices or desires that a person can make in their will, and those are important. Um, uh, those can be very important decisions uh, at the time of that person's death. So. Uh, also, um, there are other provisions that can be in a will depending on the person's circumstance and stage in life. Is creating uh, testamentary trust or contingent trust in the will uh, in the event that the individual passes away and has minor, minor children or uh, uh, children, you know, a, a beneficiary with disabilities. So there are also uh, components in a will uh, that can provide for trust, which if the trusts are created in the will, they're called testamentary trust. Moving on to the powers of attorney, I mentioned there's essentially two types of powers of the powers of attorney or power of attorney, uh, in which you, uh, the individual, designates your uh, agent, um, and one is a financial power of attorney that can that would allow your agent to take care of certain financial matters for you. Uh, and in, in the form, um, the statutory form power of attorney in Texas, uh, there's a long laundry list of uh, tasks uh, and duties that the agent can perform for you. Uh, and the individual can check the certain duties that uh, they would like the agent to perform. Uh, if they want the agent to perform all the duties, there's actually a box at the very bottom that they can check. So that is the financial power of attorney. Uh, and the financial power of attorney can be made effective immediately or upon uh, the individual's uh, subsequent disability. Uh, the medical power of attorney is just that. It's a uh, power of attorney in which you grant your agent uh, the ability to make medical decisions for, for you, the individual, if you cannot. Um, so medical and financial power of attorney, two different documents. Uh, also, I mentioned a uh, medical records release form or medical information release form. It's called a HIPAA release. Uh, very important. Uh, if uh, your loved ones or your agents would like to or need to receive uh, medical records, uh, say you know the individuals in, an hosp in a hospital, uh, and there's important medical records that need to be you know gotten by the family. Uh, this medical release form will allow the family to be able to go and get those records. You know, I know in this day and age, most transfer medical records is done uh, by a push of a button, but 
uh, in the event that physically those records need to be uh, picked up, then this, this release form would allow for that. And then finally, the uh, director to physicians and family. Uh, this is a form and a document that uh, the individual uh, now makes, makes, a, makes a, an election or uh, instruction to doctors and family of what that individual would like to see happen in the event they are uh, in a terminal con condition or an irreversible condition. Uh, and uh, there, there are essentially two selections. One is to allow the individual to, you know, pass away gently and comfortably, um, but, uh, you know, restrain from, um, you know, life-sustaining uh, treatment. Uh, or the other one is to maintain those type of life-sustaining treatments, um, you know, as long as possible. So. Um, once again, those are the general state planning uh, documents that I believe everyone should, should have. Uh, and those are documents that, that can be updated uh, as frequently as the individual uh, would like those documents to be, be updated. So it's nothing that's uh, written, in, written in stone. Um, additional documents that you may hear from time to time, and, and we can discuss those and maybe a, maybe a at uh, another time uh, are trust. Uh, lots of different types of trusts, and so I'd like to talk about those in more detail uh, at another time.